Hey everybody, I'm Gardner, the Linux Gamer. If you saw my last video, you'll know that Alpha reached out to me and asked if I'd like to review their Linux-powered laptops. I said yes, and they ended up sending me two of their laptops to review. This one is the Alpha Centurion Ultra, and I'm gonna give it a go. Like the Centurion Nano, this device has a snazzy all-aluminum body. It sports a 15.6 inch 1080p LCD display with a matte finish. I found that, especially with the backlight dimmed, viewing angles can be a tad bit shallow vertically. Looking at the screen any way but straight on starts to warp and even invert the colors. The backlit keyboard is comfortable to type on and features a full numpad. Being a Linux machine, the function keys fittingly behave as function keys until the FN key is held down. Some of the keys have strange symbols and behave in odd ways. The button I would assume switches off Wi-Fi does nothing. And I would think based on the icon, F11 would turn off the touchpad. But no, it launches the music player. Then you notice the Windows key and the Internet Explorer icon. Not a big deal to me, though it does ding the overall aesthetic of running a Linux machine. Super works just fine despite it having the Windows logo, and this button launches your default browser. Oh, and here, the backslash and pipe key work just fine. If you don't understand why that's important, check out my last video. This machine has a power button outside the keyboard, which I prefer. The touchpad is big and comfortable, though I haven't been able to use three finger clicks to close tabs or lower windows, nor have I noticed any gestures available. It also doesn't seem to have palm detection, as when I write, I can inadvertently click by resting my palm in the corner of the pad. For I.O. on the left side, the Ultra has a full-size SD card reader, headphone jack, two USB 2.0 ports, and DC in. On the right side, there are two USB 3.0 ports, a full-size HDMI, and a USB Type-C port. Internally is where the machine really shines. This one in particular is powered by a dual-core Intel Core i7-7500U and an NVIDIA GeForce 940MX. It has 16 gig of RAM, a solid state 250 gigabyte drive and a one terabyte mechanical drive. Battery life here is what I've come to expect from a laptop. Three and a half hours with light working conditions, screen on medium brightness and keyboard backlight off. But now, why you're really here, let's talk about games. This device can play Rocket League at around 40 frames per second, which to my eyes is playable. And Civ 6, a fairly CPU heavy game, loads quickly and plays around 60 frames per second. I didn't get into any late game skirmishes, but cursory gameplay seemed functional. One small gripe I have with this machine is the fact that it never seems to resume properly from sleep. That is with the proprietary Nvidia drivers installed. Close down the screen and it goes to sleep all as well, but since I put the proprietary drivers on here, it hasn't successfully resumed my session, not once. Which to me is one of the best reasons to buy a machine like this that comes with Linux on it, you know? Oh well. Overall, I enjoyed my experience with the Alpha Centurion Ultra. It's a sexy box inside and out, and despite my criticisms, I've liked what I've seen. This particular configuration will run you about $899. But what do you think? Is this machine worth it? Leave me a comment and let me know, or tweet at me at the Linux Gamer. You can also support the channel over on patreon.com slash Linux Gamer. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button and share it with your friends. You can subscribe to see more from me, the Linux Gamer, and as always, thank you so much for watching.